Welcome to the Morningstar series, How to Be a Better Investor. I'm Holly Black, with me is Dan Kemp from Morningstar Investment Management. Hello. Hello, Holly. So this is a second in our How to Be a Better Investor series, and we're looking at the fact that people can always do a little bit better, and there are some common pitfalls that we all make when investing. That's exactly right. And these common pitfalls are normally driven by the way that we make decisions as human beings. Uh, they've been in our makeup a very long time and they're tough to get over. So if, if in doubt, it's not your fault anyway. Exactly right. It's, it's the creature that we are. <laughs> so what's the second pitfall that we're looking at today? Well, one that I think is so important is something called loss aversion. Uh, people sometimes talk about risk aversion, the idea that people don't like taking risks. Uh, that's not really true. What people don't like is losing things. Uh, we suffer from loss aversion and you can see that if you ever go into a casino. That w I don't go into casinos uh, but people that do go into casinos can validate this uh, that when you go in at the start of the night people tend to spend their chips at the roulette table very carefully uh, and try and lose money as slowly as possible uh, but when they get to the end of the night and they just have a few chips left in their pocket they tend to go for really high risk bets. So people move from being uh, uh, risk averse at the beginning of the evening when they have lots and then when they've lost that money they become risk seeking because they're trying to get it back and we see exactly the same thing in investment. And this is the idea also that weirdly we feel it more acutely if we lose £10 we'll feel that loss more than we get excited about winning £10. That's exactly right. So the, the idea that's, that's normally stated is that we feel losses twice as keenly as we feel gains. So we hate losing £10 uh, as much as we like making £20. So how does this move into investments? How does this affect what we're doing? Well, it has a whole range of effects, but uh, some of the most common are that as people see a stock falling in price or a fund falling in price or their portfolio falling in price, uh, first of all, uh, they feel that they've got to stop losing money. And so that can lead to people selling investments when there's just a small dip in prices. Uh, but equally, if you have a real loser on your hand, uh, something that's, let's say, fallen by 80%, then people are normally very keen to hang on to it. Uh, that even if everything's going wrong, they don't want to sell it at that point uh, because they're hoping it'll get back to the value uh, that it, they, they started with. And so something that I find always helpful to remember is that an investment that's fallen by 90% is one that's fallen by 80% and then halved. So actually, loss aversion can really uh, hurt you, not only when you're uh, taking small losses, but also when you're refusing to take big losses. Gosh, so this is a case of knowing when to cut your losses and when things genuinely can turn around, although maybe if you're down 90%, not so much. Well, not so much by, by that point, yes. But, but, but you never know. But the, the key thing uh, is that people tend to uh, want to cut those losses early, uh, which is why uh, the upsy downsiness of the market can cause so many problems for people. Uh, but also, often they sell things that are going well uh, too early as well. Uh, and so both sides of the coin can hurt people. So how do we avoid doing this? How do we be a bit more rational about when we're buying and selling? Well, there's been a lot of good work done on this and one of the things that seems to be most powerful is just to stop looking at your portfolio. You know, be a long-term investor. The, the more you look at your portfolio, the more you're likely to be aware of that upsy downsiness and the more likely you are to be caught by loss aversion. Uh, and so if you have a good strategy, whether you've worked with an advisor or you've put something together diligently yourself or you, you have a portfolio that someone else is running, stop looking at it so frequently. But that was probably easier you know, 20 years ago when you just got your annual statement through, but now it's online, it's on your phone. People need to just delete the apps. D delete the Forget apps. Forget your logins. Exactly right. Uh, yes, you have to review periodically, of course. You want to make sure that the person that's looking after your money or the, the risk of the funds you invest in is appropriate, but it's much easier to make that assessment over longer time periods than over short time periods. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. It's been great to talk to you. And thanks for joining us.